central banks, you know, they're going to be, I'm going to say, unable and or unwilling to to fight inflation, to really truly fight inflation. Because if uh, if you were going to fight inflation right now, um, effectively, you'd have to have rates up near eight percent or above eight uh, percent. So we're, we're a long way from that. There's a huge gap. We're, there's there's more than we're less than half ways there. And, you know, uh, the Fed is talking about really only raising rates to maybe four, four and a half percent. It's true that inflation may come down. Uh, but I think that and, and uh, you know, Powell has has uh, has mentioned his cons- their, their big concern. Um, it's no different in, in Europe, for example. Lagarde has recently said they both said their, their main concern is uh, that consumers will start to anchor their expectations around high inflation rates. And what that would do is that would have people have businesses start to factor in higher inflation rates and act accordingly so that businesses may slow down, will do less hiring, people will either do less consuming and or in some ways more consuming of certain things that are not uh, that are not um, uh, things that will not perish, for example, and you may try to get a, a jump on inflation and stock up on certain things or maybe, uh, you know, buy a car or appliances or things like that in advance of expecting even higher prices. So that's really one of the things that the Fed is concerned about because um, that could really spiral uh, out of control for them. And that's that uh, that wage um, that wage price uh, spiral that they're that they're concerned about. People will start to ask for higher wages as a consequence as well. So if, if you look at um, at you know what is happening with. Uh, commodity prices. Well, uh, the reason that um, I think we're going to see uh, silver really play out with much, much higher price levels over time is that uh, commodity prices will con- will continue to rise. There's no question that we're going to remain in what we call a negative uh, real inflation, uh, a negative real rate environment. So inflation, despite, you know, central banks talking about and raising rates net uh, net rates are going to stay below zero and that's going to help keep commodity prices void and eventually rising I think we're going in a new secular commodity bull market and that's going to eventually get people to lose faith faith in currencies when they see that uh, for an extended period their money just simply buys them less and less and less in a in a more obvious way every year it's one thing to deal with two percent three percent you're dealing with seven or eight percent it takes something like eight years or so before you lose uh, half of your buying power and so uh you know precious metals have always been a hedge against uh, inflation people are are going to return to it in a big way when they see that this is the one sector that has been outperforming and you know stocks and bonds have really taken it on the chin since the start of the year um both are down dramatically i don't think either sector uh either of those sectors the 60 40 portfolio i think is finished and uh, neither of those is done falling and uh, commodities and precious metals in particular are going to hold up well. So uh, the, the general investor is going to clue into that. They're going to start flocking to that sector as a hedge. And, uh, you know, if we, if we look at um, so, my, yes, my, my long term target for silver is that it could reach as, as high as three hundred dollars in some sort of a especially in a speculative uh, mania. And. I get there different ways, so I, and I detail these in the book. Uh, one of them is if I look at the gold to silver ratio, and the ratio bottomed at uh, 15 in 1980. I think the ratio is going to get at least close to that uh, in in the, the this at the peak of this uh, this next uh, or this current bull. Um, and if you so if to get that ratio, you have to divide um, gold by the silver price to tell you how many ounces of silver it takes to buy an ounce of gold. And so my longer term view, conservative view of the gold price is that it'll reach about $5,000. You have some very um, highly regarded analysts that think uh, it'll easily reach as much as 10,000. But if we go with five and the ratio uh, reaches, uh, drops back down to 15 to one. So 15 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold as it did in 1980. Then that would mean uh, a $5,000 gold price at a ratio of 15 would mean $333 silver. And so you know, you could, as I say, some think gold will go up to 10,000. In fact, I'm starting to lean that way myself a lot more um, in the last while. And so even 10,000 at a higher ratio of 30 
uh, to one would still get you to $333 silver. And, uh, you know, there are several ratios that I, that I use and that I examine in the book. Uh, just one other one is uh, the average U.S. home price to, to silver. To, so the number of ounces of silver uh, it takes to buy the average U.S. home. In 1980, that was about 1,460 ounces of silver. Um, and if you take the average home price today, which is, say, about $450,000 U.S., and you divide that by, you round up to 1,500 ounces of silver, you get, again, $300 silver. So I go through these. There are about four or five uh, different um, uh, methods that I that I look at uh, to, to, to forecast a silver price. And when I started doing that research, they all ended up pointing to somewhere around $300. And so that that target to me started to, to take on, you know, more, uh, more importance. And, and, uh, you know, uh, you, you, when, when you're forecasting, you being, uh, sometimes I laugh at, at some financial forecasts. I see, you know, uh, interest rates are going to peak at, uh, 4.7% or GDP is going to be 1.2%. I just think, you know, being that specific is laughable. And so, you know, $300 silver is good is as good a target, uh, I think, uh, as any, at least in my case.